in this segment from a full episode of John Michael Godier's Event Horizon. He's joined by the founder and president of the Mars Society, Dr. Robert Zubrin. With Mars regarding life, now the news yesterday was, you know, apparently subsurface liquid water. So if you, if you did have yes. microbes on Mars, they would be down deep, you know, and it's probably unlikely that they would even be there. But to get back... No, no, they actually could be there. But let, let me tell you something. You know, the early Earth was a very different place than the Earth we live in. For example, it had no oxygen in its atmosphere. And when and the first life evolved to live in those conditions. And But when the photosynthetic organisms evolved, they started putting oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. And the Earth's atmosphere became toxic for these ancient organisms. So what they had to do was retreat underground. And they're still there today in the Earth's groundwater after four billion years. And uh, now you can even point out that they have the majority of the Earth because most of the Earth is underground. We're just on the surface, you know. It's like most of the ocean is underwater, not right at the top. The, 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 but anyway, um, so they're still there. And if there ever was life on the Martian surface, Mars once had liquid water on its surface. It does not anymore. When the surface became inhospitable to life, uh, life would retreat with the water. And that is where, if there's life to be found on Mars, that's where it is, in the groundwater. And, but once again, this is not going to be life that's adapted to infect uh, uh, megafauna, megaflora. It's not certainly not adapted to live in Earth's atmosphere or even the Martian surface. Um, you know, when we drill down into the ground on Earth, we can find samples of these ancient organisms. They're not pathogens. They were, you know, there were no mammals or even fish or anything of the sort around when they were at the Earth's surface. Uh, so they're adapted to live on their own. They're not adapted to be uh, agents of infection of large animals or plants. Now, yeah, so they would probably most likely be just some kind of a prokaryotic bacteria or an analog of such a thing. But I want to ask you this. Now, where I'm leading with this is, you know, you wrote the book Merchants of Despair and how anti-humanism has held humanity back. If we did find microbes on Mars, there are going to be people that say, well, we can't colonize that planet or we can't do this, or, you know, we're humans, we'll just ruin this planet. What do you say to those people? Well, I think that position is insane. Because, I mean, look, if you asked any one of those people, what would you think about taking the Earth uh, as it is today and making it like Mars? They would say, correctly, that's nuts. This is a much nicer planet than Mars with its forests and meadows and oceans filled with fish and, you know, and, and, and we have cities and used bookstores and everything. This is, you certainly wouldn't want to turn it into a desert like Mars at best inhabited by a few bacteria living in the groundwater. And I'd say, good point. So why do you oppose improving Mars to make it as good as Earth? or even one-tenth as good as Earth, okay? The, the, in, in other words, the idea that uh, there are clearly certain environments that are better than others. I mean, that's where the environmentalists have a point. If, if you couldn't have a, environment A be better than environment B, then there could be no claim of environmental damage at any time since they're all the same. I agree with the environmentalists. There are certain environments that are better than others, okay? Now, if therefore we can be doing destruction by taking an environment and degrading it into a worse one, then we're doing construction by taking a worse environment and improving it into a better one. There's no two ways about that, unless you're simply adopting the position that anything people do is wrong, no matter what it is. Right, which is which is insane because we will never get anywhere <laughs> if we adopt anything close to that position. But with Mars, you know, a say it is a sort of prokaryotic bacterium, it doesn't know it has a planet. It has no idea that it has a planet. And it would be much happier in a Petri dish on Earth in a laboratory with a food supply than it probably would be in a Martian subsurface lake that is probably sealed off from anything we would do anyway. So I've always been driven nuts by that, that, that sort of humans are bad. Humans, technology is bad. Humans are, 
shouldn't stretch out into the universe and explore it. And I think that view was prevalent. Do you think that that sort of anti-humanism viewpoint became, do you think that, that that's part of NASA's problem, that type of thinking? Well, I think it's a, a minor part uh, at this point. Uh, it remains to be seen if, if that will become a major political impediment pe 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 to the colonization or terraforming of Mars. I actually think that it won't. I think rather that position is largely of clinical interest uh, in order to identify core ideas of anti-humanism. In other words, that is a particularly pathological form of anti-humanism. I mean, look, you know, used to be we celebrated Columbus Day in this country. Okay, here's Christopher Columbus. He discovered America for the Europeans. And as a result, here we are, a continental nation based on liberty with 300 million people who came here from all over the world and now have a much better life. And the country has made all sorts of contributions to humanity at large. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Mr. Columbus or Captain Columbus. Uh, and then more recently, people said, but, but, but look what was destroyed. Um, you know, all this wildlife, vast herds of bison, Native Americans' culture, majestic redwood forests, all these things were destroyed. This was a criminal act to destroy all that. Now, I actually think that they have certain points. There were things of value that were destroyed. I think I take the position that much more was created than was destroyed. And so on net, the creation of America from what it was before was a positive act, okay? So I still like Columbus, but I will concede to those people that something indeed was destroyed. However, if there had been nothing in North America when Columbus landed, but a desert with a few bacteria a kilometer under it in the groundwater, would people be picketing Columbus Day parades today? I don't think Abs so. Absolutely okay. not. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. So so they're taking a position which is at least arguable and stretching it to the most insane exaggeration. So that that's you know where that is. It is it's a mistake. And and furthermore, I mean, look, ethics, in my view, have to be based on humanism. That is uh, an act is good if it advances humanity, if it helps people. Uh, it's bad if it does more harm than people than good. You know, Albert Schweitzer went to Africa and he cured a lot of people and he killed trillions of bacteria doing it. We say he was a good person, okay? Adolf Hitler killed millions of people creating a feast for trillions of bacteria. We say he was a bad person, okay? So those are both sane assessments of those individuals. Okay, so we don't ascribe equal intrinsic value to humans and to bacteria. However, I, I must say that if humans went to Mars and colonized it and terraformed it, I don't think it would affect those bacteria living in the groundwater at all, any more than we've affected the ancient inhabitants of the Earth that continue to exist deep underground, despite the advent of the trilobites and the dinosaurs and the mastodons and the Wehrmacht and all the rest. And, and, and by the way, long after we're gone, they'll still be there. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at JMG Event Horizon. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new shows which come out every Thursday night. Have a guest suggestion? Someone you really want to hear me have a conversation with? Leave your suggestions in the comments below.